Hey guys, just wanted to do a quick little intro before getting into two of the 30 minutes maxes. I wasn't available. Well, I was, but I got distracted and forgot that it was going on last week. And so uh, this video is going to be two of them smashed together. If you are wanting to skip ahead, go about 40-ish minutes or so uh, into it. I'll try to timestamp it or uh, make, a, make a note in the comments of when exactly that is. But if you are wanting to support the channel in any way, if you happen to have Amazon, on Prime. You do have a free Twitch Prime sub, and I go live every single day on Twitch, YouTube, and X, at least Monday through Friday, where we go over X feed, where I might even read your tweets, and we talk about Featureverse all the time. Uh, again, if you're not familiar with the show or anything else, and you only watch the channel for Featureverse stuff, I do intend on streaming and covering more Featureverse stuff as we go on, but just wanted to give a little bit of a shout out that way. Uh, if you do happen to uh, want to support the channel, it does also accept normal subscriptions to the Twitch, and we do have super chats on YouTube but let's get into the goodies. Hopefully you guys enjoy this. And uh, again, make sure you check out the most recent one because this week was spicy, but a good one. Big thanks again to Mo Meta and Mr. Alex for uh, going through this and providing the community with something. So enjoy. 30 minutes to go. Here we go. Let's do it. All right. Now, I would like to start with uh, the competition that uh, wound up yesterday, the 240SX design comp. Love it. Go have a good comp. Love looking after the community. Um, Alex, who were the winners in that? How did that wind up? Yeah, so there's a lot of great uh, entries that came through. Um, they were all voted on internally. Um, massive congrats to our winners. First place, we had Cosman. Uh, second place, LK. And third place, Kiwis for Life. Um, actually, just on that, Kiwis for Life, if you're listening or if anyone here knows Kiwis for Life, um, we're still waiting for you to submit your wallet um, via prize ticket to get your prize. So uh, please follow through on that and we'll get that out to you. Um, and also massive congrats to the runners up, um, Michelle Staten, uh, Drop Bear Dad and Urban Gecko. Yeah, really great entries that came through. Um, looking forward to seeing that come to life. Yeah, we've got a lot of talent. I mean, I always love what Kiwis for Life does, like the incredible content and yeah. Drop Dead. Drop Bear Dad as well, for sure. Um, anything else happening in the community you want to announce right now, Alex? Well, I think, uh, I think Mo just, the other Mo, this is confusing sometimes, there's two of you. Um, uh, the other Mo, uh, just dropped a, an announcement, uh, about eight minutes ago, um, celebrating this month's content creator of the month. Uh, massive shout out to the one and only Jerry. Yeah, man. Jerry's Open Metaverse, uh, a community member who's been educating and helping onboard and explain the complexity of this ecosystem for so long. In fact, he was doing it for so long that some of the content he created very early on, like around the donuts protocol and things like that, are only now coming to the forefront. And um, he's been able to recycle all that amazing content and bring it back this month, which we really appreciate. So it was really fitting. And I don't think anybody will be disappointed hearing that, that Jerry's got this because he has and continues to do so much great work. So Jerry, thanks, buddy. Poda coming your way and all the rest of the, the glory that goes with that. And most importantly, we just really appreciate what you do at any capacity. We know you're back working full time, mate, but everything you do is so appreciated. So thanks, buddy. Amen. All right. Now, before I ask you for a bit of a catch up on, on what we've sort of been doing lately, Alex, I just want to say you're listening to 30 Minutes Max. All the questions that are going to be read out are coming from the 30 Minutes Max channel on the Futureverse Discord. And this is just a casual catch up where we try and stay connected to the community and answer the questions which are most relevant. Um, Alex, just a quick catch up on what's been going on behind the scenes with the Futureverse. Yeah, of course. Um, so there's a few things. Uh been cooking at the moment um there was actually a, a little update that got pushed out yesterday um we didn't put a major announcement up for it because it was um just a i guess somewhat minor feature um addition but something that actually does streamline the experience a bit more um the staking dashboard now accepts root for gas fees so um that although you know a minor feature update um is actually really good especially for onboarding of new users um, I know there's complexities and difficulties in some areas with uh, requiring XRP for for gas fees, um, and that's something that we are rolling out into as many of our native services as possible. So that's um, just gone out on the staking dashboard. You can now stake 
and pay directly, uh, pay your gas fees directly with Root. Um, and there will also be the multi-token gas economy um, going live on the actual FuturePass dashboard um, in the not too distant distant future. On top of that, um, I think it was last week or the week before, I mentioned that uh, there's a lot of work going into a new block explorer. Um, I saw an update on that yesterday. That's progressing really well. Um, also on the root network side of things, I know there's been a, a few requests from people in the community and something that we've been conscious of um, in terms of actually having the Discord bot be able to read ownership of collectibles on the root network. Um, this is something that we had you know, planned to put some resources on um, when available, but fortunately we had one of our community members, FN0, uh, reach out and offer to do this for us. So. Um, last I heard that has basically almost been completed that work um, it's just being it's the last of it's being verified and then we'll take that work internal um, make sure that's all up to scratch and then we'll be implementing that so um, yeah shortly we'll have a reading of uh, ownership of collectibles on the root network and ensure that those apply to the relevant roles that you have within discord um, big thanks to FN0 for, for stepping in and helping out with that one. Um, and just one uh, last reminder, I think it was last week that I mentioned we are um, looking at a, a small event in LA um, towards the end of this quarter. Um, if you are in the LA area and interested in this, um, jump over to the LA community channel or the, the thread within the international forum um you'll see there's one in there called la community jump in there just drop your name or you know give a thumbs up or yep i'm interested um just so we can uh, get an idea of of numbers um and overall interest and we'll keep you posted on that front yeah that sounds like it's going to be a great event and a quick shout out to wave of innovation in the gold coast march 22nd this event's going for a couple of days aaron's a keynote speaker few of the team are going to be there so if you're up the goldie or in Australia and just feel like having a holiday in the Goldie, like who doesn't want to go to the Gold Coast? Um, great opportunity to catch up. I'll have more information coming out about this close to the date. And I think it's probably a good idea to get another channel going in Discord for people who are in Oz and potentially going to go to that because we love a good catch up. Yep, sounds good. We'll get one spun up. Fantastic. All right, now I'm going to start off with what is down here in my notes is an older question that potentially got missed. And it's asking if Futureverse collectibles that are used in NFT FI, like DeFi, platforms can still count towards time held bonus. Interesting. Um, yeah, so, so I think I um, missed this one last week, um, but I appreciate you raising it. Um, it's a suggestion that I've passed on to the team for review. Um, I know there is a certain level of complexity behind it, but I know it's something that some of the community members would certainly like to see. Um, so I have passed that on to, to review and we'll give you an update. Um, once a decision has been made on that front. Amazing. All right. Now, last week we discussed burrows very briefly around them being redesigned and reimagined. Yeah. Um, now, in the past, we did see videos of staff playing multiplayer. So yeah. the question here is about, you know, is that multiplayer function reusable? And, um, and where is that at? Yeah, so... Um... We ran significant testing um, on burrows at that stage to, um, in an attempt to kind of bring that to life. But based on the amount of work that was required to get that to a point where the user experience justified the release, um, especially considering um, the actual utility within burrows was still minimal, um, we actually, the amount of work was quite significant. So instead, we then refocused on this kind of new iteration and how burrows play into the broader Readyverse vision, uh, which is something I kind of briefly touched on last week. Um, can't really say too much more at this stage, but something that you'll, you'll see come to light um, as we start to get further and further down the Readyverse path. All will be revealed, I think is the answer to that one. Mm -hmm. All right. Now we've got some, some thingy functionality question here. Um, now, it's just regarding a quote from Aaron saying that there were five stages um, in the planned release. Uh, what stage are we at? Do we even know if we're still in doing stages? 
Yeah, I don't recall the mention of the five stages. Um, that may have been something that was kind of discussed in the earliest, uh, earlier days. Um, it is important to, to remember that, you know, when we first um, launched the thingy, uh, it was right at the start of a lot of these AI art generation tools coming out. Um, and obviously there's been massive advancements happening on with these other tools. Um, while we've been focusing a lot more on other use cases for our AI protocols. Um, so, you know, we're still exploring how we continue to, to evolve that functionality, um, but it's not one of our main priorities right now. Very good. And uh, the next question, I wouldn't know how to answer this because it seems too vague for me, but it says, how is the progress <laughs> on calendar? I yeah, often... so there was... Um, We've previously discussed that we're looking at basically putting a um, content calendar into the website. Uh, it's something that is very much in the backlog, considering we, you know, announce all of our key uh, events and activations across all major channels. Um, there's a lot of visibility on that front, and there's a lot of other key features and updates that we're working into the website at the moment. Um, that one's not a priority right now. Um, so we're focusing on some of those other important updates. Yeah, absolutely. Now, this next question, I'm not sure if it's a 30 minutes max question or it's a sit down and enjoy a beer and have a chat question. And it can't hey, be directed. I mean, that, why can't 30 minutes max also be sit down and have a beer and have a chat? Well, it could, but as we all know, I'm Chatty Cathy and we would get nothing done in 30 minutes. So the question for everyone out there is, and I, it's for Alex, obviously, what's your journey? What's your journey? into crypto been like when did you first start to dabble like what's in your bags what other ecosystems are you interested in it's broad bro you go there yeah i mean this is something that i could talk about for hours but i'll try and a truncated version um i i first started dabbling in crypto in, in late 2013 maybe early 2014 um had you know heard about bitcoin a bit but this was still very early days i just moved to london um, and I was actually more playing on the CFD side of things, which is um, for those that don't know, CFD is a contract for difference. And it's basically when you have, you know, these kind of trading platforms where you can like theoretically buy or sell tokens often with a, with a leverage. You can buy Forex commodities, all that sort of stuff. Um, so I was dabbling in that for a bit, you know, made some money, lost some money. In hindsight, probably would have been much better off if I just put the money into ownership, you know, hindsight's always 2020. Um, it was only, I think, 20, late 2016, early 2017, when I really started buying and holding um, crypto. And I was getting into, um, you know, Ethereum once that really took off. Um, and a lot of the kind of ERC-20s built off Ethereum. Um, 2017, I actually um, built out a portfolio with some investors as well, um, which went really well, as I think we all remember how how much of a bull market 2017 was. Um, and yet then when 2018 happened, not only did everything crash, um, but I also, let's say being a, a um, supporter of local New Zealand companies, I had put pretty much all of my holdings and the entire portfolio, which I was also managing for other people, into Cryptopia which uh, famously got hacked. I believe it's still the largest theft in New Zealand history. Um, and I lost everything, including um, other people's funds, which I was liable for. So that put me in a, in a really kind of dire financial position. That was, this is not something that, you know, I was very open about at the time. I tried to take it all on my own shoulders. I tried many different ways to kind of recoup those funds really put me into a bad financial position and, and scared me off the industry for a while. Um, I think pretty much anyone who's been in the crypto industry for long enough has, you know, a horror story like that. Um, and they can be very, very expensive life lessons. Um, but fortunately, you know, I took it as just that, a lesson. Um, and then uh, kind of started getting back into it in late 2019, early 2020. Um, I had been a bit more interested on just, deeper diving into the tech itself and what it was capable of doing rather than playing more of the kind of financial trading game. Um, and then it was, you know, started 2021 when uh, I came back to New Zealand and started Non-Fungible Labs and kind of saw all of the pieces align uh, around NFT 
tech, um, how that integrates into the new content plays that were coming out as well. Um, and then really got involved with Aaron and everything that was being built at Centrality and started helping lay the foundations for what would become Futureverse. So that's that's the kind of long and short of it. Um, I can definitely go into more detail. And, you know, it's certainly been an, a, a really uh, interesting, I guess, uh, life lesson journey for me. Um, you know, there was, there was some really bad times there were some major losses there were some some dark periods in there but you know i'm uh, i'm happy to say that you know i've learned from those mistakes and um you know they're only really a mistake if you keep making them so glad to have those opportunities to learn and to apply that knowledge um and you know i wouldn't be where i am today if it wasn't for all of that the good the bad and the ugly and there we go like obviously I have a few more years on you, Alex. So my story is much shorter and much easier to explain. I got into the tulip bulb phase very early on, didn't store them correctly, progressed into Beanie Babies, bought the bottom, but saw the potential, <laughs> and then just followed the next natural progression into crypto after that. And, you know, I'm just enjoying the ride pretty much. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's my story. Okay. <sighs> is brain mining likely to recommence in the first half of 2024 or any other AE, which is Asto Energy, use cases in that time? Um, so I can't commit to any definitive time frame. Um, all I can say is that our main focus is to get some key use cases for brains out, um, such as races as and, and TNL, which we've um, I identified are, you know, on the horizon. Um, with both of these launching this quarter, we'll then be following back up on a lot of the other components of ASM um, and how they all kind of fit into the, the bigger picture moving forward. So that's looking at, um, obviously, brain mining, Asto Energy. Um, there's some stuff around the Asto Energy um, uh, component that ties into the uh, FIFA minting, which I've touched on in the past. Um, and there will be, you know, a lot more information that comes out around the ASM protocol as a whole. So I can't definitively, you know, commit to that being in the first half of 2024, but expect to see a lot of updates happening across all things ASM um, throughout 2024 for sure. Absolutely. Now, the next question is incredibly long. So what I might get you to do, Alex, is kind of paraphrase the questions through your answers. Yep. As it's going in a future score, Asto Energy again, the mining, TRN. Brother, take it away. Yeah, sure. And I mean, if anyone wants to read the full questions, you can jump into the channel and, and check them out there. Um, so I think this kind of ties into the previous one, just asking um, why aren't Asto Energy and Gen2 mining um, on the root network right now, why aren't they a priority? Um, obviously, as I touched on, you know, it's important that we build out these use cases um, for things like Gen2 Brains and Asto Energy um, before we, you know, reopen those taps. Um, and uh, in regards to, there's some claims here that we're trying to kind of keep Future Score and Root out of the reach from, from some people that aren't directly spending to earn it. Uh, this couldn't be further from the truth. We're constantly rolling out more ways to earn future score through activities, not just ownership. So um, you will have already started to see that there's been the ability to earn future score um, just from completing some quests. Um, there's other ways of activity based future score um, that are coming to light soon. And then as we've touched on in the past as well, there'll be, um, you know, things like social media engagement based future score um, that will all fit into the mix. Now, these are all tools that really help, um, you know, the smaller holders kind of get a, a bit more of a foot in the door. Um, and we've always built out future score as a means to provide a fair and balanced method for uh, to reward people with root for going on this journey with us. Um, but we're you know, we're never going to make everyone happy. We're constantly getting it from both sides. And, you know, it's understandable. Everyone wants more future score. Everyone wants more root. But we are very confident in the way that we have built out the future score mechanic and its relative fairness um, across the board. Um, it's also really important to, to realize that it's not as simple as just, you know, move everything over to the root network. It does take a significant amount of work. Um, and, 
when we, you know, whenever we're choosing to prioritize one piece of work over another, there's an opportunity cost there. So our focus is um, on building out those key features, those key experience, those key pieces of the platform that deliver the most value and utility. Um, and then we can follow up on these next steps. And that leads us perfectly into prioritizing and opportunity costs, because this question mm -hmm. is, what is the current, current wallet priority at the moment regarding the next big upgrade to future pass, patch notes, you know, all this stuff would be super dope. Yeah, nice. Um, yeah, so the current, uh, in terms of future pass directly and uh, like wallet integration, so um, Zaman, which was formerly Zum wallet, uh, XRP wallet, um, and custodial future pass via email sign up are the two main priorities in terms of the kind of future pass creation um, step. And, uh, and mention of patch notes there as well. This is something that's actually gone through. Uh, it's in being worked into our operational process at the moment. So you should start to see these coming out with all future releases um, in the coming months. We'll be, you know, we're, we're just working that into our process now to ensure that that's something that's captured and published um, in the process of rolling out these updates. Yeah, but those integrations, as far as easy onboarding goes, I think we can all recognize that they're super important and, you know, they deserve a bit of attention. So I'm going to keep us moving. Right, we've got a long question here again, Alex. It's about the Vortex and whether it will be automated uh, for distribution moving forward. Um, obviously, as Alex said, these questions are in the channel if you want to read them. But Alex, do you want to take it away? Yep. Um, so, yeah, it certainly is, you know, the goal for us to streamline and automate um, all of these. At, but can't confirm that it will be the case for this next cycle just yet. Um, we want to automate as much as possible, much like the Quest payouts. It's not, you know, in our best interest to require manual intervention with these, but it is important that we allow for a couple rounds of manual review to ensure that everything is working properly. Um, as we saw with the previous Vortex redemption, um, there was a bug which meant that people were getting more root than they should have when the claim opened. This is a perfect example of why you know, we need to ensure that we do those rounds of manual review and allow for a few few of those um, before we actually flip the switch and go into an automated distribution. Um, so, and that one, you know, we obviously had a number of people that were claiming more route than they were originally allocated at the start. So once we had um, fixed that, we then topped up the vortex pool with additional route to ensure that everyone came out of it with more rewards than expected. And just in case anyone's from the XRP community in here and heard Alex say flip the switch, we don't have a switch. There is no actual, it's just a metaphor. There is no <laughs> switch. There is no switch that flips. It's a big red button. Yeah. All right. Now, they've made another point here about transparency, claiming that at the moment, if you're not staked, you can't actually see how many days are left in the cycle. Anything on that? that that's not true. Um, anyone can open the staking dashboard and see how long is left in the cycle. You don't have to um, actually be staking to see that. It might take 20, 30 seconds just to update everything. But, you know, I went and did this myself with uh, one of the, like, uh, wallets that I have which has no future score or anything that's one that it's often used for testing um, don't have anything staked on that and I went and checked and yeah shows how many days are left in the cycle all right and in the interest of transparency here's one that's mm -hmm. going on regarding the documentation of the bridge hack that happened really early on yeah um, it says pretty sure the community was told there was going to be official docs regarding this yeah, so this was shared uh, in the Root Network Discord server in mid-December. Um, I think someone actually jumped in in the, the chat there and, and linked that, so I appreciate that. Um, but for those of you who aren't aware, um, I can just give a bit of a TLDR on this. Um, so in the early days of the Root Network, uh, during the closed alpha phase, before we had actually communicated any of like bridge endpoints or anything to, in, uh, to anyone external, we were alerted to a bug in the bridge um, from XRPL to the root network, which was related to the XRPL partial payments exploit. Um, it was actually the, the Ripple leadership team themselves that pointed this out to us. Um, and the exploit was utilized by someone to drain approximately 3,000 XRP um, from the root network, which was valued at about $1,500 at the time. Um, as a security measure, we shut the bridge down after confirming the exploit with our own tests. 
And then uh, we also remove the ability for the attacker to withdraw that XRP onto XRPL, which meant that no funds were actually impacted by this exploit. Um, given this was, you know, enclosed alpha and fake, you know, internal testing, um, and it was a minor amount of funds with no actual XRP being impacted, um, and specifically no user and uh, no end user funds being impacted, we at the time made the decision that it wasn't really relevant to communicate this externally. Um, you know, we often run into bugs, as, as all companies do when you're in the internal testing phase. That's why that phase exists. Um, but as people started to kind of claim there was something bigger going on here, we we decided to, you know, put all of our cards on table and, and explain exactly what happened and how it happened. So if you want, you can go and f read that full report in the um, Root Network Discord server. I believe it was posted in the Minor Updates channel on like the 15th of December or thereabouts. Um, but there's someone's linked it directly in the 30 Minutes Max Questions channel. Thank you for clarifying that. Now I've got a question here regarding Mark. Um, and is the team still building? And I'll ask the second part as well. Can we help test on the test net? What's going on with Mark? Yeah, so um, I can understand um, why some people might be frustrated by the um, perceived lack of um, updates happening on the Mark side. Um, obviously they are still building. They launched the first stage of their streaming service recently when we launched Grumble. Um, but I actually spoke to some of their team um, earlier and they've informed me that they are not actually pushing through any new updates to this existing beta version um, because all of their resources and focuses the focus is currently working on the actual main release for mark uh, which will not only include a number of bug fixes based on um, feedback that's come through from the community uh, but also incorporate a number of new features now i can't speak on their behalf, um, but I believe that this is this will all be coming out in the next couple of months. I really like this next question. I'm looking forward to how you're going to answer it. Obviously, <laughs> I have spent a lot of time in the XRP community, and when you don't have smart contracts on a platform, I guess transactions and TPS is very, very important. Mm -hmm. But uh, what is the maximum TPS, which is transactions per second, of the root network blockchain? Um, yeah, so it's, firstly, I think it's important to realize that transactions per second is inherently a subjective measurement with numerous factors that can contribute to it. It's hard to gauge the actual usefulness of TPS in isolation when you compare across chains, uh, as it depends on what a specific transaction transaction does for a particular network. You know, we've I've seen many different use cases of different types of transactions that can impact in a lot of different ways. Um, but generally speaking, the accepted kind of uh, TPS for substrate brain, uh, sub, substrate chains, sorry, a bit of a tongue twister there, um, can achieve over a thousand transactions per second, which is approximately 70% of uh, the Visa network's transactions per second, Visa obviously being the payment um, provider. So, you know, very you know, similar to what is being currently processed through, you know, one of the made biggest financial providers in the world. Um, that said, we also do have other scaling solutions um, planned that once we actually get towards, you know, seeing high level of transactions per second, we're obviously not anywhere near the 1,000 transactions per second at this stage. But once we start getting closer to that, we do have um, some bigger um, designs in place that allow us to scale beyond that. Good answer. Very good answer. And of course, TPS isn't always relevant. It's just a number, guys. All right. Now, this is a why question. It's not a when, it's a why. Mm -hmm. But why are none of the tokens from Futureverse listed on Binance? Um, I mean, look, it's not as simple a process to just list on major exchanges like Binance. Most tokens launch on smaller exchanges first to build up su sufficient holders and uh, interest and then pass through the vetting process for major exchanges. But we can't comment on, you know, the status of listings with other exchanges. That said, it is obviously something that is very important to us. It's in our best interest and something that we are pursuing. Um, but you know, also important to remember that these are third party, third parties with their own agendas and with their own priorities. So, yeah, I mean, in Binance in particular, 
just wait and see. Moving on to a Nifty Island question. I know a few of our team have downloaded their collectibles into this application. It looks like a lot of fun. I haven't done it. Alex, the question is, you know about it? Have you done it? Yeah, I uh, I was actually, I downloaded it earlier in the week um, and was trying to have a play, um, but I kept getting stuck on the loading screen for some reason. I might need to just dedicate some time to debug because as is always the case with work, you know, I tried to do something off on the side and then get pulled into another meeting or something. So that one, you know, wasn't high up the priority list, but I'm going to have a tr- another play with it this weekend see if I can get in because it seems like a lot of people have been having a lot of fun in there um, so really keen to give that a go I'm the same as you finding the time and explaining to my wife when she looks over my shoulder that I'm actually working is really hard to do so um, that's a tricky one it's like trying to do that 240 SX competition it's like are you working or are you colouring in kind of oh, <laughs> no that's why, that's why I didn't get an entry in all right. Now, will loyalty be rewarded for seeker holders who didn't burn the seekers? No, is that still going to be a thing? I love a one-word answer, so let's go with yes. Oh, perfect. Of course it's going to be. Yeah. All right. This is something I don't know much about, but Snapchat isn't listed in the partners section of the website. Did any of the – did we distance ourselves from them, ongoing conversations? Uh, anything you can add there, please, Alex? Um, yeah, I mean, we only did one official activation with um, Snapchat for South by Southwest. This was back in the non-fungible labs, fluff world days. Um, and it was more of a standard like business to business engagement than an actual partnership. I know there's been some other stuff that's come through on Snapchat as well in terms of the, the lenses that have been built out. Um, but yeah, that's not something that we would classify as a partnership. Um, when we use the word partnership, we mean it. Um, unlike many others who, you know, claim a partnership just when they're buying services off another company or something. Yeah, that blockchain bunny Snapchat filled. I love that. I haven't seen those around much anymore. I want to see more of that. I got a Snoop Dogg retweet off that. That was cool. All right. <laughs> okay. Now, here's a serious question, and it's going to be a tricky one to answer, I know. Now, a few users have lost tokens by sending from TRN to exchanges like Bybit and KuCoin, as they don't know about the TRN versus ERC bridges, is there any way the TRN devs can program a warning which will recognize ETH address with the OX at the start and pop up a warning saying you're about to send TRN root to the ERC20 address? You may lose your tokens. It's a serious one. Um, what can we yes, do there? Very serious one, something I've been very conscious of, something I've tried to... Um put as many safeguards in place as possible around. Um, unfortunately, this isn't really feasible um, for a couple reasons. Firstly, uh, the root network already supports addresses in the standard Ethereum format as um, the root network supports EVM. Uh, even the native TRN addresses are also start in the same format of OX. Um, but if you look at, you know, even when you sign up, for FuturePass using your Ethereum address, your Ethereum uh, address is also then replicated on the root network. So the root network also supports Ethereum addresses. Um, Now, when it comes to exchanges, the exchanges themselves always notify people when making deposits or withdrawals to ensure that they are sending their tokens on the correct network. So always, always best to to read those steps, make sure you're doing them properly. Um, also, you know, it's not a not a dumb idea to send test transactions, especially when you're dealing with large amounts. Um, but I guess all this being said, if someone did actually accidentally send tokens on the root network to an ETH address, to an ETH wallet address, they, in many cases, they should actually be able to recover these as any ETH wallet can create a future pass and then have that ETH wallet address replicated on the root network. Important to note here, though, that this only works for wallet account addresses. It doesn't work for contracts, which is what almost all exchanges use for receiving tokens. So um, that doesn't mean that you know funds sent on the root network to an Ethereum uh, contract deposit um, will be recoverable. But for example, if someone accidentally sent, um, you know, if I meant to send uh, root to 
Mometa, for example, and I accidentally sent it to his Ethereum wallet address, um, and he hadn't created a future pass. He could actually still go and then create a future pass, and that Ethereum wallet would be replicated on the root network. So it's a tricky one. It's one that I understand. Um, there's a lot of pain and frustration around. Um, it is difficult, and it's, it's something that you know I, I wish we could solve this problem. It's certainly not a problem that's unique to us. It's something that it's experienced across pretty much all chains, especially when you're looking at cross-chain interoperability. Um, but it is important to note that you know we we do put in warnings and notices um, both on our side and on you know the exchanges themselves also do have those warnings in place. So always best to just just take a moment, just double check things. Um, you know, there's no need to rush when it comes to send, sending transactions. Um, so yeah, just 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 take that extra step, take the extra moment, double check. If you're unsure, you can always come in and ask. Um, yeah. The mass adoption we need into operability, and right now that user experience shows how big that divide is still there. But this is what we're, why we're all here, guys. We're trying to solve these problems and, and make this all work. So uh, good answer, Alex. Obviously, there's only so much we can do there. Now, my, <laughs> ne my next question. Future Pass for the next Legends gear, has that been added to the future score? Uh, I don't believe this has yet. Um, this is all being worked on alongside the Party Bear Future Score Audit and Quest for 5 and 6 rewards, with all of that planned to be implemented um, soon and in the order that will ensure that the relevant Future Score uh, updates are put in place before the, the rewards are sent out. Um, and actually, I think that covers the next question as well, which was asking for an update on uh, Five and six. Is, yeah. yeah, excellent. We can miss that. And that takes us back to the previous question, which is uh, back to mass onboarding. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, when does when does Futureverse anticipate first mass onboarding experience to really begin? I'm talking about the ones that have no crypto knowledge. My understanding is they are our target market, not so much the crypto speculators. I'm not sure if I agree with that, but Alex? I, I think at the end of the day, everyone is our target market, but it's where you, it, as I touched on before, whenever you make a decision, there's a kind of cost benefit analysis and there's an opportunity cost. So, you know, if we have the ability to launch an activation that brings in, you know, 1% of the existing crypto market or 1% of the normies market, shall we call them? Um, obviously, that 1% of normies is a much bigger figure. Um so, yeah, I mean, great question. Uh, we do have a few key experiences lined up to target this kind of mass onboarding of normies. Um, and a key component of that is to actually kind of remove anything that makes them feel like they're going into the kind of Web3 realm, um, unless that's something that they want to pursue. So, um, yeah, I mean, like Reebok, is an a good example of something that you'll see coming to light um, this year, which is really kind of has a, a bigger focus on onboarding normies. But before that can be achieved, we need to roll out um, like the FPAS update for custodial accounts and email signup, um, which, as I previously mentioned, is one of the next major updates planned for FuturePass, um, because that in of itself, you know, removes the kind of one of the biggest steps of onboarding in web3 which is setting up a wallet remembering your seed phrase all these sorts of things um so yeah a few other key updates in terms of just removing some of those steps some of those hurdles obscuring the tech a lot more so that when people do engage with these new experiences that we're putting out they don't even realize that they're engaging with a blockchain nfts or anything like that and just regarding onboarding those crypto speculators, you know we're very close to the XRP community. And one of the main reasons behind why we're attending Wave of Innovation is not so much to do a massive branding exercise, but it's to spend time with that community, getting to understand what their developers need, getting to know the community itself, and, um, and bringing everyone together. That's what it's about. So as far as mass onboarding goes, baby steps, but we get in there. I got one more question, guys. And then uh, unless Aaron can find some more, oh, sorry, Alex can find some more from the chat, um, we'll open it up to the floor. But here's my last question. Aaron made two presentations on Gen 1 at the conference in China a few months back. The first presentation was made available to view. I think Schiller hooked us up with that. The second presentation included a demonstration of how Gen works, but the video was not available. 
we were told there was an effort being made to make it available. How do we go, Alex? Can we get our hands on it? Will it happen? Uh, yeah. So, I mean, this one just came through this morning. I haven't um, had a chance to get confirmation yet, but I know the team were following up to try and get access to that. Um, a lot of the times the conferences themselves, you know, limit access to stuff like this, um, in part because they want to actually drive, you know, attendance to the event itself. Um, but I'll follow up internally. I'll see if we did manage to get that video through or if that's still something in process or if it's just been flat out refused by the conference. Um, if that is something that we can get access to, I'll, I'll share it um, in there in response to this. Sweet. Well, we're at 40 minutes at the moment. Have you seen any questions come in that need to be addressed? Yeah, there's a few here. Um, so we've touched on those ones. Uh, here we go. Will Readyverse have VR support on launch? Um, I can't really go into too much detail around the kind of rollout of products for Readyverse at this stage, but um, as far as I'm aware, you know, the, the focus is not to launch a VR experience straight out of the box. Um, and it's really about how we take people on that journey. And I think this kind of ties into another question here around, you know, the Apple Vision Pro launch. Um, on a scale of one to 10, how excited are you to see this particular Apple product launch? Very excited to it. I'd say, you know, up, up in the nines. Um, but once again, I do believe that a lot of this work around AR, VR, VR in particular, is still... Um, some ways away from getting past some of the clunky user experience. And so, yeah, I mean, I'm really excited to see the Vision Pro launch. Um, I think it will be a major milestone in this kind of next step of spatial computing. But I do think it will still be a while before we start to break the back of some of the clunky user experience side of things. And when we actually manage to cross the chasm and, you know, hit that tipping point from the kind of innovators, early adopters into really getting to mass markets. So, Exciting times, um, always a bit scary when it comes to kind of new innovative technology when you're in the bleeding edge as well, you know, you're just as likely to be too early with a product, um, but it also does help lay the foundation for everything that's to come. So yeah, it'll be really interesting to watch to see how well um, this is received by the general market, but I do think the the advancements being made here and the launch of this will also help drive more interest, hopefully in a very positive direction around, you know, everything that we're working in when it comes to the metaverse. Um, so all in all, very exciting. Can I, can I just add, with the Apple Vision Pro coming out and Ready Player One about to be launched on Netflix, geez, this timing, it aligns so well. Love, timing is everything, right? Mm -hmm. Amen. Um, there's another one here. Um, just referencing the fact that, you know, a few topics that I've mentioned are not a priority. Um, so they're asking just, I guess, for a bit of um, transparency around uh, what is priority. Are we going to do a transparent Kanban board? Um, there isn't a um, plan for us to have a public Kanban board like they did at the early days of ASM. Um, but, you know, we'll always try and address um, with as much um, transparency as I can when it comes to these sorts of calls. Um, but I think, yeah, it is important to realize, as I've touched on, you know, there's always an opportunity cost to developing anything. Um, Thingies Art, you know, has been fun that that is, you know, an existing piece of functionality. Yes, there's more that could be done on that. But for us to put resources onto that takes resources off something else. And I think, you know, while it can be um, frustrating at times to kind of not know what's going on in the background. I think we've proven, you know, time and time again that when we do launch key features or updates, you know, it's all part of a much bigger vision that makes sense um, when you look back on it. Um, what if you fuse the pig in a jet? <laughs> well, I think we all know the answer to that one. Um, and actually, shout out to the, uh, the pork jet competition that I think it was um, What's Up Doc was running. Um, I've seen that there might even be a pork jet collection coming down the pipeline soon. Um, so stay tuned. Uh, any plans on integrating other existing Warner Bros NFT projects outside of the Futureverse into the Readyverse? So um, I think if you go back and watch the original Readyverse podcast, um, you'll see that their vision for Readyverse 
is far, far, far beyond what uh, the existing Futureverse ecosystem contains in terms of content. You know, this is about building out a massive scalable platform and experience that can include any IP imaginable. Um, and there's, you know, lots of other conversations going on in terms of partnerships there. Um, in terms of existing Warner Bro NFT projects, um, I mean, I'm, I don't actually know that much about previous Warner Brothers NFT projects, but I think um, it's not necessarily about looking at existing NFT projects themselves, but all, just more so looking holistically at IP. Um, you know, if if we start to bring in more and more IP, then we start to also hit a tipping point where, um, you know, people don't want to be left out of that experience and it starts to open the floodgates. So, yeah, expect to see a lot in the, the future of Readyverse, far beyond just the existing Futureverse ecosystem. Um, the, are some of the Grumble Goblins created in the likeness of OG team members? <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's a little bit of inspiration in there as well. I think there was also some ideas on TNL um, to make some of our staff members bosses. Um, but yeah. I uh, I think Jesse may have modelled a goblin or two um, after me and a few other people in the team. Um, I'm, a, Bobby, I'm looking Bobby. at – I'd like to update my PFP <laughs> soon. You know, I'd like a new PFP. I've been rocking it for a long time. Maybe I know some guys that know some guys, huh? Give me yeah. a little something, something. There's a bunch of other random chat going on here around goblins and stuff, uh, asking about – there's one of the, the unique-looking goblins – um there yeah there'll be more to come soon We're, we've got ideas in place on how we can onboard new communities through goblins and create custom stylings of goblins around specific events um but that kind of wraps up every question that i can see here um i'm conscious we're already at 47 minutes max but i'm happy to stay on for another couple minutes um if anyone wants to jump up and ask a question we'll take you know one or two questions from the audience all right guys this is your chance just feel free to jump in unmute and say what you want to say i think we covered a lot today alex we i really, really think i stunned, think we did good stunned silence you know it's uh i take that as a good thing give nft bro a, a chance to stop typing and take a breath um <laughs> Just to touch on where we started the whole show off is super congrats to the winners of the 240SX comp and to our content creator of the month, Jerry, who everyone knows has put in so much work for this community and is so deserving of that award. Otherwise, bro, I reckon we just wrap this up, buddy. i got a busy day and I know you have too. Likewise. Thanks, everyone. Great to see you all. Um, and yeah, we'll see you again soon. Keep the questions coming. Later, guys. Cheers. Absolutely. All right. Well, welcome everyone again to 30 Minutes Max. This is our, catch our casual catch up where we try and address any questions you might have. I'm Mo Meta, uh, also known as Scotty from Marketing, joined by Alex, the VP of Community. As always, we want to get through as many of your questions as possible. So, one thing that I just wanted to add for today before we get into it. Now, Lately, we've noticed a lot of questions coming in that are pretty long. They only need to be about two sentences. We're going to be formatting away shortly how we can best help you ask these questions. We shouldn't have to because we keep repeating this, but there are other places that you can ask these questions. Now, we also have two other forums. You know, I've just lost my notes here for a moment, guys. Now, if you've got these questions outside of 30 minutes max, the best place to ask them is ask us anything. And also there's another one, if you're interested in our, our partnerships and products and have any suggestions, that's where ideas and feedback come in. All right, we seem to have a hot mic down there as well. Thank you very much. So it's really important guys, to utilize that 30 Minutes Max channel that is in the Futureverse Discord to make clear, precise questions, a couple of sentences long, so that we can answer them and get through as many as possible. Alex, you got a bit to cover today as well. So let me just kick it over to you, buddy. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate that. Yeah, um, definitely important 
Um, I know it's, it's often people want to add a lot of context in that, but it's if you keep them short and concise, then we can answer them as ex exactly as they're written. If you go on a, on a long-winded detour, then we're going to have to trim them down. Um, firstly, um, just a bit of housekeeping as well. Um, I want to just touch on what happened yesterday with the distribution for Year of the Rabbit. Um, as some of you may have seen, uh, there was actually an initial user error on our part. Um, there was a mistake in the script um, and just the formatting of the script, which initially saw all of the root tokens allocated for the Year of the Rabbit drop um, go out to a single inactive address. Um, fortunately, because we are still in um, beta of the root network, we haven't kind of launched it fully live um, we were actually able to use sudo to recover those funds, but that's not something that you know we do lightly, and it's not something that we will be able to do uh, once we are out of beta. Um, in fact, once we have governance in place, uh, which is on the roadmap and development, then that won't be possible anymore. Um, but I just wanted to obviously front foot that. Um, you know, we believe in in transparency around everything that happens on the root network. Um, there was a mistake that was made there. Um, unfortunately, these do happen at times. We're all human. We make mistakes at times. Um, but we did rectify that as soon as possible. All tokens, um, as far as I'm aware, all the root tokens have now been successfully distributed. Um, and as far as I've seen, um, I believe there's a couple cases of some people who haven't properly received the scene and sound. Um, if that is you, just please raise the ticket. We'll look into it. Um, there's a few of those that we're just following up on at the moment. Um, another note, another piece of housekeeping. Um, NFT responsibly uh, reached out to me um, and said that they are planning a London meetup on Saturday 24th of Feb at Well and Bucket um, in London. So if you guys are interested, um, please jump into the UK channel um, in the International Forum, um, UK chat. Um, there's, I think, food in the afternoon and drinks from 6 p.m. onwards. Um, if you're interested in joining for food, please do make sure you RSVP so they can ensure that they have um, recorded you and can uh, make space for you. If you're just coming for drinks, uh, there's no need to RSVP, although it's still good to kind of get in there and express your interest just so they have a gauge of the numbers. Um, one final note as well before we get into the questions. Um, I know that we've had a lot of requests for um, third-party tax software to integrate the root network. Um, this is something that we are exploring, but obviously these are third parties. We can't guarantee anything when it comes to timelines. Um, that said, I did see someone in the community, um, uh, one of the platforms, Coinly, has a natural public um, integration requests form. Um, so... Uh, let me try and dig that out. There's a link in, uh, I think it's an ideas of feedback, but I'll find exactly where it is. Um, but if you go into their public integration requests um, page, you'll see there's actually, I think, two um, different um, requests in there for the root network. Um, if everyone jumps in though, onto those upvotes and comments on them, um, they'll be more likely to be seen and more likely to be picked up um, by Coinly. So, um, important to kind of rally everyone in these opportunities to help kind of drive the demand for these third parties to work with us. Um, and yeah, um, I will try and find the link for that and share it uh, in 30 minutes max so you guys can find that easily. Yeah, cool. that London meetup. London meetup sounds good, man. I've noticed that ICE has jumped into the uh, XRP Gold Coast channel as well because he's going to be joining me and Aaron there too so that's another person on the ticket um we don't have anything organized because we're not from there right so if there is a bar or somewhere in the area that the community want to start thinking about organizing if you're up that way mate drop it into that channel xrp gold coast future first discord and you know we'll see if we make something happen but let's get into these questions mate we'll fire through them first one coming up uh do we celebrate milestones internally at future first yeah, of course. Um, company culture is really important to us and we try and celebrate everyone, big and small. Um, 
It can be difficult at times. Obviously, we are quite a globally distributed team. We have a lot of remote workers around the world, um, but we do often have, you know, workplace events, both in person and virtual, um, to celebrate various different milestones. Um, and in fact, we actually have a um, event next week um, to kind of celebrate the one year anniversary or the one year birthday of Futurist. I guess more more of the the kind of signing of the original contracts for Futurist, not the the ultimate coming together of the companies. Um, but we're, yeah, we've got getting the team together next week for that, and we're actually got Marka and Shara coming down to New Zealand um, to join for that as well. So next week will be a big one. You guys are going to be busy. I'm not going to be there, but if they're having a cocktail party and things, maybe I should be. But next time, next time for me on that one. All right. Next question: Will there be Will, uh, will we be able to create custom maps for Grumble? Interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a great suggestion. Um, I think best thing for that is to uh, make sure that you send that through in the feedback form um, with the way that Grumble works and how we've launched it. In fact, basically all of the games and experiences that we launch are in launching in you know early stage or, or alpha or beta. Um, and key part of it is to take you guys on the journey with us, um, allow you to provide feedback and help us shape the, the journey for these moving forward. Um, whenever you finish a game of Grumble, um, you'll see there's a form that comes up where there's an opportunity to provide feedback directly to the team. Um, so yeah, that's a great suggestion. Um, best point of call would be to, to drop that through that feedback form. Yeah, that was what I mentioned earlier. Feedback, it, feedback and ideas forum, guys. These are perfect for that. Now, is there any news on getting circulating supply and market cap fixed on CoinGecko? Um, so firstly, coin market cap um, is now showing accurate circulating supply and market cap. Um, this isn't fully, fully automated yet. Um, it's not 100% real time, so it won't automatically update when you know quest rewards are sent out, but um, it's getting there. It just still waiting on some stuff from their side in terms of coin gecko uh, we've provided all the necessary information to them um but we're still waiting on an update from them and you know once again it's important to remember that these are third parties who have their own priorities and agendas so um we can't really do anything but wait for the for an update from their side yep absolutely now any updates or no sorry any aspects of the asm white paper that will be updated that you can share? Um, I can't share any details on that. You'll just have to wait and see on that one. Yep, that was a response I thought I was going to get. Any updates on Seeker's backpack claim? Uh, so in terms of Seeker's, we're, we're focused on delivering the Seeker Nexus staking, Seeker part swapping, um, you know, all that stuff that's mapped out in the, in the silo roadmap on that new website that launched at the end of last year. Um, before we can um, follow up on any of the stuff around the backpack line. Cool. Is the promise that fluffets will be only obtainable by owning and breeding fluffs still a thing? Um, yeah, nothing's changed on this front, um, but we'll reveal more information on everything related to fluffets at the appropriate time. This next one's more of a me question, but I'll let you answer it. Anything planned for <laughs> Uphold, XPAR, XPunks, XRP, anything for, the, anything for the XRP army or nothing coming? I mean, not in terms of the Uphold uh, XRP army NFT holders, um, not, as far as I'm aware, nothing specifically for them, but we do have our own plans in, in the works to engage and convert more XRP holders. Um, that said, we're always open to suggestions. If you have any ideas around that, you know, feel free to, to fire those through um, in the ideas and feedback channel. Here's an idea. We are attending Wave of Innovation, which is an XRP event, to spend time with the other developers there, meet the community, shake some hands, show them what we're all about, and at the same time, you know, help them understand Futureverse, Root Network, all this good stuff. So absolutely, come to Wave of Innovation. Help us fly the flag. More than welcome. All right, moving right along. Man, this is a huge question. So, yeah, too big. It's Urban Gecko's question. It's about the status. It's about the status of pretty much everything. How do you want to handle this? 
Um, yeah, I think so. Firstly, I think it's important to reframe how we're currently looking at everything as as separate products, and instead kind of look at how they all come together in the open metaverse and with everything that's being developed um, through our recent ar- announcements around Readyverse and all of that. Um, but I'll try and do just a quick fire update on as many as possible. Um, also, it's really important to to kind of keep in mind that you know these things kind of evolve over time. Um, so like if you look at Fluffs, for example, like the original roadmap for Fluffs, we've pretty much delivered everything on the one thing is is Flufflets. Um, but obviously as uh, our suite of products and experiences evolves and you know Readyverse and all of that comes to light, there will be more and more that comes through for all of these different specific collectibles. Um, seekers, I mean, the, all the roadmap there on the Silo website, Party Bears, we've literally just launched Swappables. Fuzzies, thingies, ray guns, burrows, they're all tied into the broader game experiences that come under Readyverse. Um, goblins, I mean, we've just delivered Grumble end of last year. We've got open feedback channels for you to help drive the next stages of development there. Party backs, I mean, this is something that just keeps getting asked over and over again. And I keep having to remind people that this was a paid mint that people actually didn't want to pay for. So that was put on hold indefinitely. Um, it is something that is still being explored and, and will likely be re- relaunched at the relevant time. Um, brains, um, once again, um, discussed this last week, but we are focusing on launching the specific use cases for brains like races and TNL, um, and then publishing an update on the, to the ASM white paper, which will outline the next stages. Um, in terms of All-Stars, you know, we've announced that Races is launching very soon as one of the minigame experiences for them. Um, TNL, I mean, there was an update even just earlier today um, announcing that the open alpha for TNL is coming very soon. Uh, Atom uh, rolled out all the vehicles late last year um, and Burndown will come in due course. Um, the question about the Yat gem here, which isn't even our product, and there's never been any promise of utility around TTK. I mean, obviously, that's all kind of ties into the the Readyverse vision, and there'll be more to come through the official channels on that front um, in due course. But yeah, I mean, it's it's all coming together under this kind of broader banner and experience. Um, that's, I guess, as as broad and comprehensive as a, of a quick fire kind of status update that I can give on all of that. And remember, you can go over to the 30 Minutes Max channel and read these questions in full because I'm coming up on another one, more than one, that I'm not going to be able to read out, unfortunately, because it's just written from the hip and it's just too long. It's a bit of emotion. I need to go back to you, Alex, for Makla's questions. Yeah, so, I mean, as, as you mentioned at the top of the 30 Minutes Max, it's really important that People ask their questions clearly and concisely if you want us to answer them. Um, Especially, you know, looking at these ones and people can go read them themselves. We're not going to tolerate snide remarks or attacks on the team. Um, So, you know, we're going to paraphrase these questions um, to something that is, you know, more constructive, something that we can actually, you know, um, have a constructive dialogue around. Um, and also, I guess, you know, show how, as an example, to ask questions constructively. Am I jumping straight to this next question regarding our relationship with Peersist? And is there one? Yes. Yep. Okay. Uh, let me, let me, let me ask that relation- again. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me ask that again then. Um, what is Futureverse's relationship with Peersist? Uh, I know what Peersist is, but uh, you can answer this question. <laughs> As far as I'm aware, we do not have a relationship with Persist. Um, and I'm not aware that we do either. So as far as I know, mm-hmm. we don't know. <laughs> All right. Um, but for anyone who wants to know more, Persist is an EVM sidechain from the XRPL. Right. Mm-hmm. Will Moai be deploying XRPL AMM on the root network slash EVM? That's a question for Moai. Absolutely. All right. Can you share any insights into what you're doing to attract more external talent to TRN? Um, yeah, I mean, of course, we have Born Ready Ventures uh, with a $50 million fund specifically to help attract builders to the root network. Um, we've just kicked off the first Futurist Outlive Ventures base camp. There'll be some more information revealed on that soon enough. 
Um, outside of that, I mean, obviously, we are constantly working and bringing in um, partners, some of the biggest IP and brands in the world um, to, to build out, you know, both these first party and partnered experiences, which as those evolve and start to come to light, there will be um, natural incentives there to, to attract new builders as well. Um, we have a whole partnerships division. We have business development teams and that all of that will, will come to light in due course, but there's plenty happening in, behind the scenes. This next question is a good one as an example of you don't have to write a question that we want to read. You just have to make it able to read. And this one mm -hmm. says, why is the future pass user experience and fees worse than MetaMask EVM? Good question. So firstly, MetaMask is just a wallet provider. They have nothing to do with the fees on the Ethereum network. Um, additionally, fees on the root network are much, much cheaper than they are on Ethereum. And we also announced recently that we've reduced fees on the root network by 67%. Um, the vision for future pass is also much bigger than what MetaMask currently is. And you'll see more of this come to light with the launch of custodial wallets, email sign up and the upcoming updates. But yeah, it's really important to realize that what you're basically doing here is comparing us to Ethereum and MetaMask, which is built by consensus. You know, these, of course, our, our user experience straight out the box isn't going to be as good as those that have been building in the space for a very, very long time. But we are making significant updates on a very regular basis. Um, and there was a lot more to come to continually improve the user experience across all of this. Uh, we have a hot mic in there. I think that might be corn on the cob. Fun name. I'm going to jump into this next question, which is paraphrased again, because it's a very long question. And if we simplify it down to why has it taken so long to get Readyverse out to the world? We were first teased in early 2022. Yeah, I mean, deals at the caliber of Readyverse when you're working with the likes of, you know, Hollywood producers and Warner Brothers and all of this, they're incredibly complex and take a very long time across to get across the line. You'll start seeing more information coming out in relation to Readyverse um, through the official channel soon enough. But I mean, keep in mind that the Oasis and the Ready Player One book itself took like 14 years to build and launch. Um, you know, building things at such an incredible scale with such complexity does take a long time. But while all of that, you know, those partnership deals have been going on, we've also been pulling together a lot of the essential components to make the open metaverse possible. Things like DOT and the asset register, swappables, um, you know, all of these various components that have been in development in parallel to lining up these partnership deals. <clears throat> so we're going to stay in that vein for a little bit here. And the next question is, why are the likes of Readyverse Studios and Gen set up as separate companies and not just part of Futureverse? Are these distracting from leadership's focus on Futureverse? No, no, not at all. I mean, everything feeds back to Futureverse and the team are dedicated to the success of Futureverse. Our recent joint ventures, the likes of Gen and Readyverse Studios, are structured as such so that we can allow the inclusion of key strategic partners as co-founders like Mike Karen for Gen um, and Ernie and Dan for Readyverse. It's pretty standard business practice and if we we're trying to roll that all into the one entity as Futureverse, it would become incredibly complex. Born Ready, another example. Um, yes, it's a separate entity, but it exists with the primary goal to help kind of incentivize and attract and support builders on the root network. Sure are. How many product managers are there? How are their roles basketed and who do they report to? Alex, are you going to tell us? Um, look, I understand that there may be curiosity, a lot of curiosity around our internal structures and operations, but um, it's important to recognize that, like all companies, we prioritize confidentiality of our, for our operational efficiency. We obviously value diverse perspectives, but it's not feasible for us to accommodate every suggestion regarding our business operations. If we were to, you know, expose every single part of our or, a company operations and structure we would be inviting a, a million different people to come in with a million different ideas and feedback and it's just not a viable one, way to run a business 
This next one gets straight to the point. I'm not sure if the point's correct or not, though, but the point it gets to is, why have burrows and thingies been cancelled? I didn't get the they memo on that. They have not been cancelled. Um, please stop catastrophizing things. Burrows multiplayer was put on hold indefinitely because the work required to launch it did not make sense when that work would have kind of become redundant as it was refocused into Burrows um, in this place in Readyverse. Um, thingies make AI art as promised, that has been delivered. They will harvest mycelium as promised, but we need to actually build out the land mechanics components, which is what we are currently doing in order for them to take on that next stage of utility. Our next question is regarding people who are gonna be building on TRN, Alex. Who besides Moai is building on TRN? Can you give us any info into the projects Born Ready Ventures have invested in or are accelerating? Is there anything you can do on the test net to help push new builders along? Um, so we have plenty of partners which we're in various stages of discussions or development with, um, but as always, I'm not here to front run any official comms about partnership announcements. These things take their natural course. Um, they are confidential for a reason as things are developed, um, but they will be brought to light and promoted. Um, at the appropriate time. Um, we will be releasing information or there will be information coming out um, from the Born Ready team um, in relation to the first base camp cohort uh, in due course. Um, but once again, that's not for me to kind of front run here. Um, in terms of the, the last point about um, is there anything that you guys can do to help uh, on testnet? I mean, that's you know really great idea um i'll be sure to you know discuss this with relevant partners um because it's great that our community are eager to help um with testing user acceptance testing on testnet and i'm sure many of the partners that we have lined up will appreciate um having that as a you know a resource to tap into to ensure that they are building out um, their product the user experience and all of that as robustly as possible yeah, well said, mate. Now, what are the planned user acquisition funnels for the next legends? Are you expecting the community to fund user acquisition again? Um, <laughs> we'll deal with the first part of that. Um, so T now is launching, as I touched on before, like all of these experiences are launching, you know, in early stage open alpha um, to have, to bring the community on the journey with us to help you kind of test and shape the future of these products. Um, and that's something that we're doing deliberately because you know we want to, to take you on this journey with us. We could obviously wait longer and, and do more testing internally and refine it, but it's, you know, it's, uh, it's better for us to actually bring you on the journey when they are still early. It means obviously things aren't always going to be 100% perfect, but this is part of the whole point of testing and opening up in alpha and beta. Um, at the appropriate time, we'll open up more user onboarding funnels um, with the likes of the, the Rookie Mint for boxes. Um, but to the second point, we, we never expect the community to fund user acquisition. I don't understand what this is coming from. So and that, that part of the question just doesn't even make sense to me. And that's why we'll move on to the next question. Can we have a DGen council? I thought we already did. But yeah. <laughs> I mean... Yeah, you're welcome to form one if you wish. You know, it's a great community initiative. Um, if you want to form a DGN council within the community to help collate and deliver robust and actionable feedback to us, then by all means, go for it. Now, the next one here, have you heard of Polymer? And if so, are you interested in partnering with them? Um, so I hadn't actually heard of Polymer before it was mentioned, um, but I appreciate the uh, suggestion. Um, it does look like they're working on some interesting tech, and I pa passed it on to the partnership team to review. Um, if you have a contact there that you can put us in touch with, please fire it through. It could help speed up the process um, of us you know, discussing and seeing if it's uh, worth us working together. And as mentioned earlier, Ideas and Feedback Forum is a great place for things like this. All right. Now, Aaron mentioned a few times last year an infrastructure demo. Is this still a plan? Uh, yeah, I'm not 
sure exactly what you're referring to by infrastructure demo. I mean, there's a lot of different components to our infrastructure, um, but we will be doing more deep dives into our tech and infrastructure through the likes of Future First TV in the near future. Next question. How is the future pass FAQs document coming along? Yeah, so this has progressed well. Um, we're actually waiting on the next round of major updates to FuturePass to ensure that the work that's being done there is relevant and up to date um, and not something that we're just going to have to redo once that comes out. Um, but a lot of it has also been coupled with uh, the user experience side as well. You know, if, uh, if we are able to solve lots of these um, friction points through improvement of user experience, then the actual need for, you know, FAQs and that um, becomes less. Mm -hmm. We left a really long question in because we kind of like it. We need a bit of lightness and a bit of love in here as well. So I'm going to read this whole thing out, guys. That's if I can listexically get through it. It says, GM, <laughs> GM, loving Futureverse and everything that's going on at the moment. Really impressive work. And it's all much appreciated. Well done and congrats to the team. Would love to hear your opinion on shifting to a career in Web3. I'm not a designer or engineer or even particularly creative, but I love Web3 and NFTs and crypto. Just don't have time to do the deep dives. IRL, I'm a paramedic and a uni lecturer. Man. And so wondered what transferable skills you think would be most suited to making the career shift, if any. Is there space for a normie like me to dip my toe or is it all about retraining? Fluffs were my first real mint and have loved the ride ever since. Thanks. That's a nice little story. Alex, do you want to? Yeah, add I love it. I mean, that, that's, that's, uh, that's one instance when we'll allow for a long question with, um, you know, additional context to it. And look, it's always great. Thanks for your message. Always great to receive messages like this from people, especially when we've kind of played a part in their journey. Um, firstly, look, I'd, just want to say that as a paramedic and a uni lecturer, you're not only a literal lifesaver, but you're also helping shape future generations. And for that alone, I have an enormous amount of respect for you and the path that you've chosen so far. Um, I guess to answer your question, I'd kind of put it back more to you and, and say, you know, what part of Web3 are you most interested in? Um, I think a lot of people kind of see it as this, this monumental hurdle to completely retrain and jump into. Um, but really, for a lot of the part, Web3 is, you know, just companies taking the next step in tech. So there's always the need for normal skills across business when it comes to Web3 companies. Um, but I guess it's really about, you know, what is it that is most interesting to you, most exciting to you? Um, there's a great few great techniques you can explore um, in terms of, you know, really finding your purpose. There's one, a great, you know, one called finding your ikigai, which is basically the intersection of, you know, what you're good at, what you're passionate about, what the world needs, and what you um, can get paid for. Did I say we're good at? Yeah, enjoy what the world needs and what you can get paid for. Um, a few other great techniques as well. Um, Simon Sinek is a, is a really great author in terms of helping find purpose um, and using tools to really track down and hone in on where you want to to operate um so i think the key thing really is to almost like look at the web3 component as just a tool in the toolbox as opposed to like the be all and end all of your journey um but you know if you want to discuss this in, in more detail ha always happy to to have a chat with anyone from the community um i have a a calendarly link on my Twitter account, um, which you can book in a one-on-one -on -one with me if you want to sit down and have a direct chat and, you know, we can discuss ideas. Um, but yeah, lovely message. Great hearing about your journey. Keep doing, you know, the incredible work that you're doing as long as you're, you know, enjoying it and, and inspired by it. Um, but there's always opportunities for newcomers in Web3. Um, it's the whole ethos of, you know, this industry is decentralization, democratization, community building. Um, so I think it's really just about almost remove the Web3 component and just focus on what do you want to do? Because if it is still education, for example, and even potentially education within like healthcare, um, there's a lot that could be potentially done within Web3 on that front. 
Yeah, really well said, mate. And like my journey as well, when it was just crypto we were out there doing before smart contracts came along, it didn't make a lot of sense for me to transition my skills over. But once it started to evolve and these two worlds started to come together with these real use cases, then, well, common sense isn't common. And if you've got that, we're all still really early. There's opportunities for everybody. Okay, I'm going to keep going through these questions, but I really appreciate that one coming in. Any plans for a bulk bridging function? Uh, yeah, this is something that is is being explored um, and something that will, I think it's on the roadmap, but I can't definitely can't confirm at what point that will be um, a live function. Yep. Uh, most L1s advertise which dApps are building on the network. Can we start to do the same? I know you'll state that Futureverse is a private company, but we are also open source company and this is a standard in the space. Um, so firstly, let me just clarify this point. Um, Futureverse is not an open source company. Futureverse is a private company. The root network is an open source blockchain, which Futureverse contributes to the development of. It's a very important distinction to be made there. Um, but to answer your question, yes, of course, we already do, and we will continue to advertise builders on the root network at the appropriate time. <clears throat> As I touched on before, though, you know, a lot of these partnership um, discussions and the development going on is still ongoing and is still confidential, um, and those will come to light at the appropriate time. That's right. I like this one. I sent out another goblin to onboard somebody today. I, I've onboarded a lot of people with goblins. They're great. He mentioned a referral link. Is that something Futureverse have thought of or talked about? Yeah, I mean, it, it is an idea that's been bounced around a bit. I think the difficulty with it is um, that it would need to be structured really carefully to prevent bot farming and ensure that it's, <clears throat> it's not just, um, you know, the same people spinning up multiple accounts to take advantage of rewards and that. Um, it's certainly something that we can, can take another look at. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, it's it's an interesting idea. It's just a tricky one to implement in practice. Ideas and feedback, that's the place for it. Lock it in there. Mm -hmm. All right. I've only got a couple of questions left, guys. Uh, so if anyone in the room is looking to speak and ask a question, and I hope you are, um, two questions to go and we'll get into it. Any update on Gen 1? Will it be released in Q1? Um, at this stage, nothing's changed as far as I'm aware, but official comms will come through the official gen channels. And the last question I have on my run sheet is, will we be engaging with any gaming guilds to play the next Legends or races? Um, yeah, likely when they're a little bit further along. As I touched on before, it's important to remember that these games are being launched in early alpha. And we really want to work with our existing community first to help gather feedback and refine the product development before we take it out too far. Um, and yeah, just, I guess, remind people that, you know, we're taking you on this journey with us. Um, things won't be 100% perfect from the start, but it's important that we do bring you in early during these stages to help you, um, you know, shape the future of the product with us to really take you on the development journey. Thanks, Alex. Just before I throw it over to the floor, I just want to remind everyone, we love doing this for you, but this is how we communicate with the community and we love doing it. But it takes a lot of work on our side as well. So please, when these questions come in, keep them nice and brief and easy to answer. And anyone who wants to jump up on stage, please just jump in right now. It has kind of been one of those days, hasn't it? Mm. Alex? Silence is Alex. golden. You wish, you wish, you wish. <laughs> <laughs> we do wish. I Which character did you Jesus. play when you met Possible? What's that, sorry? Which character did you play when you met Possible? I haven't met Possible yet. I haven't had the honors. Um, but I would 100% be a fluff, of course. Can we meet Possible this year? This year, uh, I, I think that might be a possibility. Um, I'm sure there'll be um, some bigger updates to come out of the official Readyverse channels. It's a trap. It's a trap.
<laughs> Nothing is a trap. Um, we're celebrating Year of the Dragon on Saturday. All my Chinese friends are pretty excited. And mm -hmm. the dragon brings a lot of luck. We had talks in the past about diners, dragons. Will we see a dragon in the Year of the Dragon in the future? Uh, I, you know, I, yeah, I can't confirm that. Um, I think... You know, we've we've toyed with plenty of ideas in the past about different collections, different characters. Um, I think the main thing for us right now is really just delivering on um, all of the existing promises, bringing all of this tech together, you know, building all of the platforms so that it integrates and can provide and build out these scalable experiences. Um, once that's all up and running and, and going smoothly, then, you know, at the appropriate times, the doors will fly open for all sorts of different weird and wonderful characters and collectibles and avatars to, to come and play in those environments. Thanks for this. Would have just make wonderful dance for Chinese friends and partners. One, <laughs> one, one, la <laughs> one last one. You had pretty amazing announcements, but maybe you understand for like playing customers. Right now, it's only like announcements. They are huge. They're amazing. But mm -hmm. when would you say it's a big bang for customers? Maybe not in a week, not in a month, but give us a quarter. Uh, I mean, I, I, I guess the difficulty with that is that we have lots of different experiences launching across lots of different collectibles um, that we have. So, for example, I mean, you know, we launched Grumble late last year. We have TNL and Races launching in Alpha very soon. It depends on kind of what part of the ecosystem that you're engaging in. Um, obviously, when we talk about the bigger vision and how everything sort of comes together under Readyverse, um, there will be some some big announcements, and we've already kind of um, touched on some of the things that will come this year on that front. Um, but I can't I can't give you any specific dates on that. No worries. Thanks a lot for this. Um, one thing that just came in my mind. Did you talk to the bigger DEXs about uh, putting Root on there? Um, so the thing actually with, if you're, if you're looking at the, I mean, the, the whole point of a DEX is that you don't actually need to kind of like list with them like you would with a normal centralized exchange. You can, you can go and trade um, Root yeah, ERC20 on like Uniswap, for example, um, and it's actually up to the community and the holders themselves to kind of build those liquidity pools and reap the rewards from it. There is, in terms of obviously just kind of verification of uh, tokens um, when it comes to these platforms, you know, you, you get like warning signs flash up if they're not, um, you know, a token that's been around long enough and has a specific amount of volume, et cetera. Um, there is, we're constantly working with the relevant people to ensure that all of that is mapped out properly. Um, you know, that we have root represented properly with the icon, with all of the relevant information, et cetera, across as many platforms as possible. Sounds amazing. Thanks for this. One last one uh, just came in mind. Magic Eden is growing and getting more NFTs, big partnerships. Are you talking mm -hmm. to them currently and will we be there in next four weeks? Uh, I mean, next four weeks is a very optimistic timeline. Um, whenever it comes to integrating with third parties, it does not take as long as people think. Uh, sorry, it does not. It takes much longer than people think. Sorry. Um, Magic Eden is, is something that, you know, we're very aware of, um, but I can't confirm any specifics around discussions that we're having there. I really like what you brought up around uh, the Chinese New Year. I'm going to have to change my background for my fluff to that new scene I got dropped. And I'm going to just spam the timeline when the time is right. I think everyone should do that. I think those backgrounds were sweet. Alex, do you reckon we've got any more questions coming in from the community? Um, I haven't seen any. Let me just see. <laughs> what are the plans for Year of the Rabbit 2035? Wow. Uh, that's... Uh... <laughs> That's some real alpha fishing there. Um, do, do, do. I mean, can, uh, can you break down any of the reasons why part of your future score decision is still ongoing? Uh, not asking for a win, but many would appreciate what can be shared as an update. Um, yeah, I mean, this is just down to the level of complexity around these. As I touched on, um, a lot of the work that's going on in terms of just 
finalizing that is part of the broader steps required for us to finish kind of automating and platformizing the whole future score quests program so this is why we're conducting such stringent audits um, and reviews of everything that's going into future score at the moment so that moving forward we can automate and streamline that process a lot more um, we are you know getting close to having all of that squared away All right. Well, if there's no more questions from the audience, I think this could be a great time to wind it up. But can I just say, even though I might seem very lighthearted and blasé about all these things coming through, I know there's emotion and real care and thought out there in the community about everything that happens. And we know it. We see you. We hear you. And we feel it too. But um, if I come across being very, as I said before, very nonchalant, it's just to try and help us keep the sentiment as positive as possible moving through, because I'm that kind of guy. All right, Alex, anything you want to finish off with? Yeah, I mean, you do a great job on that front. But yeah, it is, it's an important note. Look, I know there's a lot of financial and emotional kind of investment in, in everything that's going on. And, and um, things can get very emotional and heated at times. But when it comes to communication, it's always very important to try and um, treat things as constructively um and amicably as possible it's something that we're all you know can be guilty of i'm i'm certainly experiencing myself at times we're all human um you know and and we all get emotional and when we're emotional we can be prone to lash out but when you lash out when you're emotional you're more you're only actually more likely to get people to kind of go defensive or you know if you if you go out with aggression you're likely to get met with aggression so just uh yeah i think especially when it comes to asking questions or providing feedback um you know there's always the great tip of like you know write something but then go to sleep and wake up in the morning and and kind of rewrite it um because even myself i can testament that like when you're in the moment and emotions are high sometimes you say stuff that you don't mean as my my partner will <laughs> will remind me of very often um but look at the end of the day we're all here for the same reason we all want to see this journey be as successful as possible we're all putting in the hard work in various different areas to achieve that um so once again thank you all for being on this journey with us thank you for the trust and faith that you've put in us um we don't take it lightly we work our asses off every day to try and make this as successful as possible. And I really look forward to seeing how far we can take this journey. And the best way to support each other is an IRL at either the Gold Coast, LA, London. The more we get together and sit around, have a drink and a laugh and spend real time with each other, the better. And I can't wait to do that with some of you soon. So we're gonna sign off there guys. Thanks for everyone for showing up. Um, hopefully we'll do it again next week, but we're super busy right now. We'll always do our best. Thanks, guys. Until next time, we're out.